Hello and welcome to the Cheese Room Podcast. It is a transfer deadline day special. We'll also be looking at the Burnley game. Uh, Friday night show, hosting twice in a week. You know, what can I say? I put in the work here. Uh, to my right, it is a presumably very, very tired. Davo, how you doing, mate? I'm, I'm tired and emotional from the excitement of deadline day. James, I'm, I think this is my second uh, je- uh, deadline day I'm, I've done with you. And if the last one was a go by, we've got not a lot of activity to talk about as we go along. But lovely to be here and hello, everybody. Lovely to have you here. Um, below me, we got Stuart. You excited for deadline day? At about half past seven this morning when I woke up, I was very excited, like I always am on the deadline day. As the day has drawn on, my excitement has gone to Davo levels, um, which isn't great. <laughs> Um, so um, I had to play a couple of hours of Starfield just to cheer me up. So I've done that for a little bit. Uh, and now we'll see where we land at 11 o'clock. Yeah. If everyone's still awake. <laughs> uh, yeah. And another man who is a trooper. Um, it's, what, four in the morning for you? Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, four in the morning. Yeah. Dave's uh, comp- uh, compatriot. Of Australia, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on. Shy, is that correct? Thank you, boys. Lovely, lovely to be back on. I seem to only come on on the the deadlines now. Apparently, my deadline deadline day special. But uh, yeah, I was just playing like a twelve year old a bit of FIFA before and made a bit of a you know, hopeful signing of Phil Foden from Manchester City for Spurs at eighty million pounds. So I don't know if we're you know maybe we're just going for a last minute bid for for Phil Foden. Who knows? But um, <laughs> there's wishful thinking. <laughs> Believe, believe. You never know. We got Van der Vaart once. Right, so <laughs> we'll um, we'll keep you updated and you can presumably keep us updated on no transfers if we do something a magical last moment. That'd be lovely. Um, but let's start off by just talking, I'll go to you first, Dave, about the signing we have done this week, or nearly is done. Brennan Johnson. What do you think about Brennan Johnson, Dave? I think it's an interesting signing. Um, uh, was, is it about 45, 50 million quid? Um, if you were to look at up top, you would assume that with Kane going, you'd be buying a, someone who plays more in the middle than on the wings. Um, to all intents and purposes, and the words really for man, just that the signings are not club signings. Uh, they are the manager signings. Um, and I think... What we've seen in the in the game so far, and the way that Angebo is, is that he he wants to have uh, pacey players on the wide positions up top, who've got the ability to beat a man uh, and get some crosses in. Which, is we saw Richie's goal the other night, is is the what is how Paris has got found him, and 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 that plays to his strength. So, I would you have said to me last May. When uh, the final whistle went, Brentford at home and falls gold, blaring out the uh, speakers that we would be looking for someone like him. No, but if that's what the manager wants, that's what the manager gets, and we wish him luck. Very diplomatic answer. Um, you know, this this guy is our only, uh, aside from um, Madison, James Madison, he's our only real attacking signing this window, right? Well, Solomon, but you know. Bench player, right? Um, this is on. That's three, though. <laughs> yeah, well, Madison plays in the midfield. Uh, the point is, like, he is the marquee attacking signing after we sold our greatest ever goal scorer, right? Yeah. So, okay, you try. Like, is this enough attacking reinforcement considering Harry Kane's gone? Um, I mean, look, I'm a little bit not like anywhere as funny, but I'm kind of a bit like Flav from like, if, I don't know if people watch the Fighting Cock podcast and that, where like, I mainly watch football for Spurs. So in terms of like, actually, do I know that much about this guy? Not really. Did I jump on YouTube and do like a bit of a five minute, let's see all his goals and attacking press and everything the other day? Yes. Um, so like, I haven't seen too much of him, but what I've seen and what I did, you know, from like a kind of 10 minute YouTube clip and that with it, he looks like he's got pace. Um, looks like he'll bring something dynamic attacking to the team. I think I don't think we're not we're never going to get a Kane for Kane like repla- like like for like replacement. I think we can try go out there and try and sign any striker in the world. But if you look at our history of signing strikers between Robert, you know, Soldado and Vincent Janssen, we don't seem to you know exactly have the best luck with uh, trying. You know, we can take your thirty goal players from other leagues and 
and that. So I think, you know, we've kind of done better with the, you know, look at our history and that with it recently, Kulisewski, um, you know, Sonny. I think we'd, we've done well with turning, like, attacking wingers into, like, you know, goal scoring. You know, Kulisewski in his first, you know, six, three months of the club, was he had more, more goal contributions than, like, anyone in the first, you know, 10 games or something. So I think if we can, you know, do that with him, then the, there's a player in him. Clearly he did well for, you know, Forrest last year. Um, is he, he's English, he's like homegrown as well, isn't he? Oh, oh. Is homegrown, yeah. Yeah, he's homegrown. Yeah, because he's, he's, yeah, he's Welsh. He's Welsh. Mm. Yeah, so I think that, that's adding to that. I mean, I think it ticks, it ticks a few boxes and I... Yeah, look, if it just adds some sort of, you know, adds rotation to it, I think clearly from the other night we need some better rotation players. Clearly the ones we have at the moment just aren't that good. Um, and, yeah, like you're not taking a pump from getting a Brian Hill from like another league or something, you know, he's played in the Premier League. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's you know, I think, and, and reading the other day as well, like you're, you know, they're saying like oh, 45, 50 million is quite, quite a lot. But unfortunately, in today's market after, you know, Liverpool rejected a 150 million pound bid for Salah, like you're only worth what a player, you know, someone's willing to pay and deflated, inflated market 15 million is about 10 million from like, you know, 10 years ago. So if you told us we can sign a player for 10 million from a proven, you know, proven Premier League player, well, we take it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Stuart, what do you think about Johnson? What do you think about what he adds to the team? Um, I think the primary thing that I'm keeping in mind is apparently it's someone that um, Anne just wanted for a while, not even just at um, Tottenham. He's, he was someone that he was looking at while he was Celtic as, at Celtic as well. Um, so um, that's a plus for me that if he's, if he's after this particular player, then we know he's going to get used and add something to the attack. He's very, he's, I think he's one of the fastest attackers or players in the Premier League. Well, he certainly was last season um, when they were tracking it all. Um, so that's useful because we do need, I think, players who are going to attack defenders. I think Kulu has the ability to do it, but for some reason, I think from a confidence perspective, he's not doing it as much as he has been doing in the past. Whereas I think if we can potentially get it to a point where Kulu is able to be on the left side and use his left foot naturally, much mm -hmm. like Perisic has been doing. And then you maybe have um, Thompson on the right because he's right footed and then having him crossing naturally, I think there might be more balls into the box that are coming in in a bit more of a fluid way than it being a little bit more constructed, like cutting in and waiting to find another player to bring in and all that kind of stuff, which I think is what, from the bits that I've, I've seen of Celtic when we announced Ange, Everything is based on speed. Really, really quick movement, quick passing, quick delivery into the box so the defence don't have any time to set and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, he's homegrown, he's young. Um, it adds something to the squad, but like a lot of people, you know, it's we're in that period now where we've got a gaping hole from Kane and um, we just have to wait and see how it all plays out. At the moment, the Premier League games have been great. Everyone, I think, was a little bit shocked and deflated after the Fulham debacle, which considering he changed so many players, it wasn't really much of a surprise. So I think given now that we're not going to have any other games other than Premier League now until, what, January? Because I think that's when yeah. the FA Cup games start. Yep. Barring injury, he, he can pretty much play a set 11 or however many he wants to, including subs, for the rest of the year and going into January. So, barring injury, touch wood, we can actually build quite a stable team, which might do us some favours. So, you know, it's not probably the most exciting signing on paper, but it, again, if Ange wants him in and we've got him in, that's the most we can ask for at this point. Yes, Antonio mm, didn't like, um... dream. I did like the fact that Ange basically turned around and didn't deflect, you know, he said early in the press conference that it's like, you know, any signing that we get in is a signing that I want. Like, Conte did the whole, it's a club signing thing. Mm. Whereas Ange is like, I don't, he's like, I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> like, he's basically, through, he's like, what do you mean? Like, if I want a player, I want a player. Like, you know, the club mm. will, you know, will speak. It's it's not like the club is signing a player and then telling me, oh, by the way, we bought in Jed Spence or whatever. Like, I'm pretty aware when the players come in, like as players coming in, he's not like, you know, oh, by the way, we just got this kid just doesn't, you know, as a heads up. So 
I did like his response in the press conference yesterday. Yeah, I think he was quite good in the, um, like you say, shy the conference. He made the very clear distinction between players he wants that are, you know, meant to come straight into the first team, whether that's starting yeah. or onto the bench. For yeah. Academy opportunities like a Phillips, like Villies, and all that kind of stuff. If that's what we want to do as a club, that's mm. what we be doing anyway. Yeah. All the top clubs go and snatch the best talent from around the world, and you know we are mm. beginning to get a little bit better at that. Um, and it's just how long it takes for us to to blood them into the first team setup. Which, you know, given the lack of games, I think will take a bit longer for some of these guys. But um, yeah, I, I you know. As I've always said, the main thing we want is the coach who's managing the team to get the players that he wants to help rebuild the team in his vision. So hopefully, John yep. another cog into that. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, on the, on the youngsters' point, you can argue that Saar and Destiny are the two young hopefuls that we've bought that touch of wood so far look like uh, the real deal. Because yep. I think that um, previously to that, I'd go so far as back as Deli Ali was the last time we bought someone yep. who is a youngster, uh, someone that we mm. can uh, develop, right? Because our track record of doing that hasn't been very good. Yep. Um, and obviously, when you have a manager who doesn't like playing youth, wants, uh, wants established players to come in and win trophies straight away, which is Conte and Mourinho, then you're meant to, you should buy them players to, to fit that. And uh, m- maybe we'll get a chance to pay tribute to Jed Spence's Tottenham career thus far later on in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can fit him. He, he's gone out. He's got to lead, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Do for him if he gets games. Yeah. And so has Rodon gone to Leeds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Northern Spurs. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Phil raises an interesting question here. You know, if Andrew wanted Brennan Johnson, why didn't we go in for a bid from three weeks ago? I, it's I that think... kind of uh, anti Enoch vitriol feel that we can't have on this show. And it's very offensive. <laughs> I will have my, you know, that me and David will yeah. have our pay from Levy Cup just for showing that comment. Well, so I'm going to be on the <laughs> car wing, you know, I'm going to be skinned. Well, let's, let's be a little bit real about this though. If, if you go back in onto socials or whatever and look at when was the first time Johnson was mentioned, mm. it wasn't, it wasn't long before around then. So you know, we are talking that stuff, stuff has been in the rumbling for a while about Johnson. It's not, this doesn't just come out in the last week. This is, been a few weeks why we don't make bids quickly and get deals done I don't know some element of it is obviously the amount that we go in with the other element will obviously be the play the team who is selling need a replacement so the Hudson Adoy deal I think was very sort of parallel to this one so when, as soon as Hudson Adoy was confirmed everything seems to ramp up with Johnson um so as ever I thought I thought at the start of the window things were going to be a bit different because we, we did move quite quickly in some areas because um, Madison was very quick. Vicario was very quick. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, this is good. Now we just, you know, Phillips, although not a first teamer, a good signing to get in. I thought, okay, here we go. All the rumours of Patsoba, VDV moving really fast and almost done all that. And then what? I, I can't, how long did we have? Six weeks? Maybe more? Where we just mm. went dead? Um mm. And by the sounds of it, that was all to do with them trying to negotiate getting Kane out. And I don't know the ins and outs of what's going on behind. I don't know how those things can't be separated in terms of man management and managing different areas of the operation. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that goes on does seem particularly amateur. And one of the best things that I picked up out of Andrew's press conference today was when he was talking about, he got asked about scouting. I don't know how it came up, to be honest. But he started talking about recruitment and scouting and all that kind of stuff. And he said there's a lot of work going on to reset that area of the club. Um, so I'm hoping that going forward, this is just going to get better and better. And um, we're going to make some improvements in how we operate in the transfer windows and how we go about scouting and all that kind of stuff. Because um, 
right now this this hasn't been great again if we're being really honest. I mean that was it like like it's like when Brighton just swooped in for Ansu Fati it's like oh, look I know Brighton are in Europe and they're a little bit more probably an attractive prospect from Helps some but at the end of the day well, yeah yeah that's true <laughs> but yeah I mean they've got to win a loan deal though like we're we you know we're we're a bigger club than than Brighton at, at the end of the day and you know they, I mean their recruitment is insane like how they find the talent they do and then sell them off for, for what they do, but it's just still like you know, if we wanted someone like Ansu Fati, you know, you'd think that Spurs would be a more attractive prospect in general than yeah than Brighton. But you know, it's just a matter of yeah, it's we, are, you know, our recruitment in terms of you know even like who we bring in from you know Europe and and you know finding those hidden gems and stuff like that. We just yeah, it's I, I don't know as you said the ins and outs of it and that, but it just we don't seem to have the best you know, yeah. strategies when it comes to bringing, bringing those, you know, it, those talents in like Richarlison, for example, obviously, you know, he was, a, you know, he's a proven player in the Premier League. It's not like a hidden gem or anything, but I feel like we just need to, yeah, get better. At, you know, I mean, I thought, I thought we got Brian Hill and obviously he hasn't done much, but like I thought he was one of those, oh, we've actually gone in and found someone who, you know, yeah, he's touted and stuff like that, but we've picked him up. But yeah, our recruitment just can't, it's just a bit, bit of an issue. In that sense, um, but. I think I think um, with with the whole anti fatty thing, I think that I think from what I've seen on the, all the various sources that pop up, most of it bullshit. But you never know. Was to do mm. with the fact that because there was no option on it at all, it was just a straight loan. That that's why Tottenham weren't interested because it was literally we're just helping Barcelona pay keep their wage bill down for a year. Yeah, um, which we did, uh, which we could, we did last year, of course, with Clement <laughs> Longley. Yeah, yeah, yep. Probably and, uh, kind of made some money in a waste of time. Yeah, um, I think the biggest issue, we, um, we'll probably talk about this, is it, it all comes back round to the players that we can't shift mm. because it's all well and good paying 200 grand or 80 percent of 200 grand or whatever fat he's on. He's on mm-hmm. wage, I know that. Mm. Mm. Um, it's all well and good paying that. If you're not gonna, if you've not got an opportunity to sign him, but if you're also then paying however much Dyer's on, Sanchez is on, Lloris, and Bele, all these guys who are basically in 24, 48 hours are going to be because yeah. they're not going to get registered. So how yeah. I, someone will have to figure out who's much cleverer than me how much a week we're spending just to have these guys sat around for twelve months, Dembele's two years. Because mm. we can't bloody sell them. If we were going to sell them, we should. Someone would have come in by now. I think Endon Bale is just being found out, unfortunately, even for the loan deal that he did last year. Like he was pretty bang average, um, and people saw that as well. Like he's just not cut at them, unfortunately, at the moment. Like you know, they got we got who was it last year? Was it was it Napoli who covered like his wages, and he went over went over there, and he didn't didn't pull up any strings. I'm surprised about La Celso, to be honest. Cause I thought he more people will be in for him because he's obviously been pretty average for us, but he did show, he's shown talent, you know, he's shown that he can play for Argentina and he can show that he can, you know, when he's gone on loan, been, been okay. Um, mm. He just seems to, you know, someone said, you know, was the Argentine and Harry Winks for us? Like, cool. you know, that's a bit harsh. Like, <laughs> like, a bit harsh, but someone said like, well, one goal in, fifth, one goal in like two, two or three goals and X amount of assists in 56 games. You know, he's he was great in January, you know, two years ago when you know, under the dry, the dire football play under Mourinho. But like mm. anyone would have kind of anyone who decided that we're going to go forwards, not backwards, in that you know, good look half decent, but yeah, he's just not pulled it up. And I, I was a big LaSalle fan, like, I really wanted to come good, even when I saw him on the sheet, you know, team sheet again for Fulham. I'm like, I just uh, there's something there that I see, and he just and he's not just can't seem to, to do it for us, like. Mm. which is a shame because when he first came, I was pretty excited about him. I'm like, okay, we missed out on, you know, Fernandez. We unfortunately will happen with Spurs and that, you know, we can go in for one and then we get the, you know, you get the slightly cheaper option. But mm. I really thought La Celso was going to be something half decent. Um, maybe it was just the sexiness from the Argentina and, you know, and, you know, if, if, they, if that, that kind of, you know, I kind of attract, like attractiveness of, of him, but he just hasn't, hasn't pulled up and hasn't shown what I thought he's going to be for Spurs. So, well, he was. Uh, I mean, he was at PSG, 
Did we buy him from PSG or do we buy him from the Spanish club? Uh, we bought because... him from... uh, I think we bought him from Betis. Yeah, because he was at PSG and he did nothing there. And one assumes yeah. that, that um, Poch wanted him because of the Argentinian connection. Um, but yeah. we, we wouldn't pay the asking price for Fernandez. And uh, as soon as the January window opened, United bought him and then they, they went on to qualify for the Champions League at our expense. Um, and of course, that was a window that we didn't get Dybala because of his media rights and we couldn't negotiate that oh, in the yeah. end. So, um, mm. you know... It's you know it's the modus operandi of of, uh, of our owners for the last 22, 23 years. They like doing the last minute deals, where I think Daniel, sorry, as I like to call him, Coy's data or data Dan gets excited <laughs> or got excited, is that when he sold those three players to uh, Portsmouth in January '06, uh, Mendes, Pamaro, and Sean Davis for about seven million quid, and ever since then. He thinks it's like uh, it's like his property deals, isn't it? So, yeah. I think the fact that uh, Hudson Odoi went to Forest and Johnson's going to us, it's just like a convincing transaction. So it should be really more up down Coy's day to down street to do these things earlier. But hey ho, um, but that's just what we do. I mean, and I always where I think we do better is if we get players in earlier in the like in the window, more opportunity for them to. Uh, Bed in, especially with a new coach. And of course, this is our fifth season running with a new coach each season um, that we do that. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, uh, if he wants to shift players and he can't shift them, I still think there will be one or two players' contracts that is going to get cancelled. Whether we, ha- I don't think they have to do it by 11 o'clock tonight, UK time. No, you can, but but you can make them a free agent whenever. Yeah, so he could they could terminate, pay him out, and off they go. And you've got Lloris has got one year left. Yeah. Eric Dyer and his allotment's got one year left. And we'll see what well, happens. I suppose I one just, ray of... Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, all I was going to say was the current players that are, that are out of contract next summer are Lloris, Perisic, Forster, Dyer, Sanchez, and Austin. So they're the ones at the moment that are the most likely to if we're going to do any kind of contract ripping up. I think Sanchez will stay. I think... San, um... I'm surprised that Lloris can't find, like... You know, obviously, he hasn't been great for us, but I thought he was going to just find a French like a French team that he was just going to go, go back to. I thought they'd, you know, like... Yeah, he's not been great for us the last few... Or, you know, last season, season and a half, had a few, quite a few blunders and that. But at the end of the day, his shot-stopping is, it, you know, was... Pretty, you know, it was fantastic. Obviously, his ball work at his feet was was awful. Um, but I'm surprised some, you know, some French team hasn't like, you know, gone in, snapped him up because obviously, you know, it's not exactly the the best league in the world. You know, the you know the what do they call it, Uber Eats league now, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised like some team, you know, French team hasn't come in for him because at the end of the day, like, he's not a bad goalkeeper. You know, he's had some, you know, when he has a blunt, you know, a, a blunder, it's very obvious. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunately it sticks out. But uh, he's been a great servant of the club. And I think it's a bit of a shame the way things are going down for him. Like 10 years at a club these days is pretty, it's yeah. nigh on, like, never happens anymore. And, mm-hmm. you know, even when we got Lloris, he still, everyone's still surprised. Like, how do we get this guy? He's one of the best goalkeepers in the world at the time. So I think it's a little bit sad, like a shame how it's going down. At the moment, it would be nice for him just to like go on off somewhere then have a testimonial if they were to do one or whatever. And just it seems to be kind of ending pretty sadly. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Him, which it, is a shame. It, it, it feels such a shame some of these guys who have been, you know, despite perhaps quality lacking in some of them. Uh, <coughs> but, um, you know, they have been good servants to the club. But I think it's kind of sad that they're going to leave on a sour note, not a positive note. I mean, potentially a saving grace is that the uh, Saudi transfer window is open for another three weeks. So, you know, yeah, yeah, where are they? Why aren't they coming in for all of our bloody players? They seem to go in for anyone and everyone. What's uh, what's the go? Why aren't they like popping, you know, 75 million for Eric Dyer? Or, you know, know, (laughs) just take take them off our hands now. They're not, they're rich, they're not stupid. Um, can yeah, I just, it's true. Can I just, although, although they did just put a hundred and fifty million pound bid in for exactly. Salah with a one year yeah. one year left on his contract, yeah. so yeah, but he's good. Um, no, he's amazing, but like that's a lot of money. 
Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple of things because I'm I'm keeping an eye on Twitter while while we're on. Um, going to your point, Shay, about um, a team coming in for Larice. Um, nice have just let Schmeichel go. They've terminated his contract. Um, right, and he was their number one keeper. So um, interesting. Larice, number one position somewhere, then that might be one of the opportunities he gets. So unless we do a deal really, really quickly, I wouldn't be surprised if we let him we terminate Larice's contract and then he's got the Do opportunity. Do you think he's going to get a testimonial? Is that still a thing these days? Or like, is it a bit of a dead, dead in the water thing? I can't remember the last testimonial the club did. Led the King? Yeah, probably that. Yeah. Yeah. Or- which, team, which team of yesteryear will they bring back? <laughs> to, uh, to pay tribute to Gareth Bale. Yeah, we'll do, <laughs> do the Mourinho. Bring back Bale for a third time. The Mourinho League Cup final that he never got to do, team. That would be See, quite funny, wouldn't it? Be, well, the problem with the League Cup runners up of a couple of years ago versus the current team is that there's a certain percentage are still there. So who are they going to pay for? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You know, you've got so, Sonny, you've got uh, Ben Davis, Dyer. They're all still yeah. knocking around. Yeah, the core of the ball. Yeah. Back in the, you know, I'm so old enough to remember that in the good old days, what we used to do is sell a truckload of players to Norwich every summer. But even they don't seem to be that interested <laughs> anymore. We sold a truckload to them. And Portsmouth. There's this, I mean, Coy's data down yeah, would, have would have loved the big, I mean, I talked about it before, but there was a big old spreadsheet going on between Portsmouth and Tottenham because you had those three I talked about. Then Eunice Cabal, I think, went backwards and forwards about five times. Yeah, and, Jermaine uh, Defoe as well. Kevin the Prince Botang, I mean, he went there from us, Defoe. and uh, and obviously uh, Harry Deadline Day deal Redknapp as well. We had to pay some some compo well, he there. As well on Deadline Days when he was at the club and when he wasn't, <laughs> because he bought yes. all the he didn't want. <laughs> that's right. So that's weird. so Portsmouth. I think Dane Scarlett went there last year, didn't he? But yeah, he it did, doesn't yeah. seem to be. Yeah, yeah. We, we should have, we should be doing more. Terry Fenwick, we told him there. Gary Stevens. I'm I'm going old again. So that's not there anymore. We need to find those clubs that are, are willing to uh, take our rubbish. Yeah, that's what we need. Um, mm. I'm just reading. Unfortunately, uh, the markets yeah. are so inflated these days as well. Like, even yeah. those clubs are like, you know, have to put in 20 million pound bids when they would normally put in like a million. Mm. Kind of thing. It's just, yeah. yeah. Championship clubs are really struggling because it's not just like even being able to buy decent players, which most of the teams can't. It's even more <coughs> difficult because. They can't afford the wages, even of some of these academy players now are on crazy money, and they can't afford even those wages. So, um, I've just seen that apparently the deal for Tosin Adebayo to Monaco is off. So at the moment he's not going anywhere. So maybe we, there might be a late push for him again if he wants out of Fulham. Um, so that's another one to keep in mind. A couple of hours. Yeah, I mean it. I think the core worry, and everyone correct me if I'm wrong, is we've signed one centre back when it looks like, well, we've technically signed two, but one's a youth prospect. We signed one, you know, first team centre back. We've, uh, it looks like Dyer's going to be out the door or sat on his own with no mates, you know, at the club. Um, you know, we, I think pretty much all of us said at the beginning of the window, we need two centre backs. Mm. And, Mm. Someone commented earlier, um, has Tap Sober been uh, disappeared? You mm. know, it looks like we're only going to get one. You know, is this an intrinsic failure, uh, uh, this transfer with her to only sign one centre back? Open question. Anyone can answer. Yeah. I, I think so, yeah. I mean, I've been listening a lot, in, you know, as I said, and the fact that Sanchez is out, is, is, you know, if one injury we get and Sanchez is back in, as we saw him. You know, I'm not a big like I, you know I do have sympathy for Sanchez. Like I feel like he has a lot of stick and he's pretty average. He has been, but like I do feel, you know, feel the amount of stick in that he gets. But the point is, though, the fact that he's still four seasons on, five seasons on, the fact that he's going to be our next backup, you know, his central defender, it's an issue. Like you, yeah. you know, done well with getting Van de Ven. He's looked, you know, he's looked quality, settled in straight away. Um, you know, him and Romero. But the problem is, it's and the way. I guess a high intensity football we're playing, we're bound for more injuries. This time, obviously, there's less pressure on the defense because we're playing more attacking football, but, you know, it's still high intensity. So, you know, injuries are probably more more likely. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I think we do. For Fulham, um, the Bob. issue is everyone knows that we're desperate for a defender as well, and that's a problem. So trying to get a play, trying to get a defender. The fact is, you know, it's showed clearly that we need one. And and play, you know, again, the Cubs aren't stupid. They're going to look around and go, Spurs are desperate for a defender to apply mm-hmm. a defender that's worth twenty million to a club. They're going to suddenly slap on forty million and. You know, it, it, the fact they've seen that that we've got defenders in the club that we can't get rid of for like the last five six years, Cubs aren't aren't stupid as much as we. You know, we hope. Oh, why can't we just get them? They're looking at Spurs, going, mm, they've still got Sanchez. That they paid forty million for in twenty eighteen. You know, mm. they, they need defenders. They're gonna put price tags on higher price tags, and it becomes a bidding war. So uh, yeah, that's that's. That's a problem. I think. I think. I, I think we need to try and focus uh, again the youth as well. I don't know how much it is, but do we have any in our academy in that? that we, I mean, again, not being nice to Sanchez, but surely some of you know our academy defenders who are you know, under 19s, under 21s can't be that much worse than than our backups at the moment. Like just to give them a go because we can't go out and get a defender because it's going to cost us 70 million for what we should be paying 30. Bring someone up from the youth. I don't know enough about the youth team. I don't follow as much under twenty ones. I know they're doing pretty well. I think they're top of top of the under twenty ones Premier League. I think they slapped Man City the other night or something. But surely they, you know, why are we not just giving these younger players a, a bit of a go? Um, and worse, gets out of a terrible performance. Well, you know, that they, they don't expect to have an amazing performance uh, first time in the, in the senior squad. So. Yeah, I think um, I think going back to a few a couple of the points, I think um, the biggest issue we we found, I think, especially from the centre back perspective, is we have just waited too long. Um, and you know, Dave's talked about this loads in, in our chat and stuff like that. In that, you know, you can't get to we, like if, if centre back is a is a priority position, which we know it is. How are we leaving it until the last day of the window to try and? Or even the day before, when we, you know, all these links with this Lloyd, Ke- Lloyd Kelly came in. So, okay, fair enough. If he's the target, great. Why have we not gone for him a month ago? Because the, the uh, one, you know, yeah, you could get a fee agreed, but it's they've got to get someone in to replace him because he's a starter for their team. So, you know, that's that's what I find a bit um, flabbergasting about a lot of what, how we're doing our business. Is we shouldn't be leaving this stuff at, like. How are we only being linked with three centre backs? I'm pretty sure there's more than three centre backs in the global world of football that mm. have got the right attributes to come into our team. Um, so I just find it, I just find it mind-boggling that our recruitment is that bad. And I think this is what Andrew's alluded to: that it, it's going to change and it needs to change. And um, this is proof yet again that it just is nowhere near good enough. We should have like ten odd targets on the go. And then we just boss through each one of them. Every single one of those targets can work for the team. Who who is actually doing our deal? Obviously, you know you got Paratici, who's technically in jail, but also not in jail because he's still around doing his thing. Like I don't know, but like Scott Munn obviously is coming as like chief football officer. But who's actually our like taking over Paratici's role per se and getting those deals through? Does anyone know, or do we have I... someone who? Yeah, I there's um, so, so Paratici. Yeah, so Paratici brought in uh, a guy called uh, Gabby Gabbiadini, and um, you had the other guy who was at Everton. He left. Um, so you have a situation where you've got him. Scott Munn was spotted at uh, City Airport with Coy's data Dan as they were going to find a new coach, yeah. and then apparently City. Uh, we're not happy about the fact that he is meant to be on gardening leave still. And I think that the way it's structured is that he has to be on gardening leave for at least this transfer window. So okay. he's not, he's not always be seen at games. Apparently he's not meant to be involved. Paratici turned up mysteriously at Brentford, as you do <laughs> on a Saturday afternoon. You know, he's, I know, he, he's left, he resigned and, uh, and he mysteriously appeared at Brentford. And we so hope so happens to be playing a game of football there. So uh mm. you know, who knows what's going on. The, the whole idea is meant to have been when Paratici came in that Levy was stepping away from uh more away from the football side, but we know that he w- went out for dinner for Bill Kenwright and did that great negotiation of fifty million plus add ons for Richarlison. 
we know that he is either mates with Jed Spencer's family or the agent and, and was involved in that as well. So he still does get involved. And, uh, you know, the wishes of for, for a lot of fans is that he steps away completely from the football side. Well, let's they say that can't... after this window then, right? Yeah. But they... Changes with Scott Mann. Yeah, but this is this is the latest new start and new structure that we've had in, in 22 odd years. I think we're on to our 18th new structure mm. or whatever it is. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah. um, you know, I think that, you know, the weaknesses that we haven't addressed are the centre-backs. Uh, I still think we have a weakness up top. I'm not, I'm not mm. convinced about Kulu. I'm not convinced about Son. Sorry, I think he's on the down. And I'm not convinced... Uh, obviously about Richarlison, so we'll have to wait and see. I think where we've really strengthened or where we look a lot better is in the, is the midfield three. Middle of the field, yeah. yeah. And we've got Ben Dakota come still back from injury. So. Yes. It's crazy that our best, mid- our best midfielder Ooh. last season now is not necessarily assured a place in our midfield three, which I think yeah. is how much better our midfield's gotten. I mean, you look at Saar, Bissouma... And I take it. Guys, I take it you're not talking about Hoiberg there, James. No, um, and those two guys were here last season, which you know that's crazy. Um, I think so, some of our players also, sorry, on like shifting players have a bit of a like, like a bit of a god complex to them as well. If you look at like Hoiberg, he's like rejected going to Fulham, like literally because he thinks you know he should be playing at a top top club, even though Fulham just beat us. On penalties, like, like like in a team that he was in, so it's just I know you know I think Lloris was the same thing as well with moving to another club, and Dyer and I think our players are you know because Spurs have been put on such a pedestal and come up so far in that there's a little bit of a you know a tall poppy syndrome, well not tall poppy but like more of a god complex kind of syndrome about you know they they think they're better than they are like Fulham isn't that beavis. It was not I mean, it's not exactly asking for Hoiberg to leave to a League Two team. We're asking you, you know, he's a Premier League established team has come in for him and he's like, No, I'm better than that. Or if that's what the rooms are coming out with, who knows if it's true or not. But you know, fan that was shifting those plays, even end on Bele and that still seems to think that he's good enough to get into any Champions League side. And that's that's her difficulty with shifting these players is obviously it's not up to them fully if they go they've got some sort of say but that's going to be the issue of getting rid of some what you know the dead would per se is that you know we we've unfortunately also you know put them on a bit of a pedestal you know we got end on ballet paid 300 grand a week or 250 or whatever it is and now suddenly you know now it's like well you're not good enough unfortunately but that psyche kind of thing behind him has gone into his own head that he's he's the greatest thing and they're trying to get trying to remove that as a big issue. I, um, I, I I think the issue that applies to pretty much all our Deadwood, right? Um, it's very cushy being at Spurs, right? Yeah, it's true. Good salary, living in London, nice facilities. Even if you're not playing, it's quite easy. And, you know, I, I, I say this to anyone. You're 30, you're 29, right? Are you turning down 80 grand a week to do basically nothing? Yeah, in exchange, I'm not, to, I'm not turning down eighty grand a year to do nothing. In exchange, <laughs> to go to a smaller club where you're going to have to work a lot harder on a lower salary. Fulham are a big mm. club, right? But he, he, they wouldn't meet his wage demands. He'd have to work a lot harder, and you get yeah, paid that's less. A good point. Why? Why? You know, to some of these guys, I think it just shows how bad the mentality of some of these players is. That they're that mm. unambitious. They'd rather sit on. I. I, I mean, I get. But then again, do nothing. Yeah. But, You'd hope a football player would get... want to be playing football. Yeah, that's why you yeah, get. Yeah, you said you can't get into that. It's like, sorry, it's like the you know the the Deli Alley coming out and stuff like that. With it, you know that's, you know the the psychological impact of it. You know that's why half these players you know do need foot, you know football psychologists and kind of keep people in their life guiding it because no none of us can understand. You know, I mean, some you know what it's like to be on you know hundred grand a week as a twenty year old. I mean, most of us weren't like you know. <laughs> Like only fifteen dollars an hour as a twenty year old, twenty dollars an hour is, you know, it, I like, you know, it's that it, it, it's you you telling players that are on twenty, you know, a hundred grand a week as a twenty year old, and then they get to twenty five, and that as as you said, like the psychological impact of that is is huge. Like it's a very good point that you know, you know no, sorry, you've got to go down to 40, 60 grand a week and whatever, and actually work hard. You're like, mm, 
Actually, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that the, the mentality thing is 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 a strong point because if you look at the Fulham game in the week, and it's a common theme, isn't it? Where if you take that many player main players out of the team and have all these sort of like squad players coming in all at the same time and they're all sort of of that mentality where they can't be asked and all that kind of stuff. That's why that's why you get those level of performances. Um, mm. If you take if you bring in you know so when Hoybier has been coming in in as a sub in the in the league games or another or Sanchez or something like that and they're surrounded by the rest of the players that are focused they're doing all right because they ain't got the opportunity to all work together in that sort of lower level of mentality and intensity and it's just yeah you bun, bun, bundle them all in together it's it's a it's a disaster way to happen and and exactly what happened yet again it's the same result so i think i mean i think mentality thing is a massive thing for Ange, and i think he, that's why you know we're seeing a lot of these players who don't have a strong mentality get in sidelined so it's the same old same old you know players who keep letting us down but um gonna gonna move on a little bit okay yeah. so let's let's talk about the outgoings so the early in the window we had winks you know um dave so player um and joe rodone went out alone <laughs> we've had <laughs> no i'm uh, winks you, you'll miss that if you call her all right. No, I said that just to annoy you. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm ambivalent in relation to Winks. I don't have as much hatred for him as others. Um, but we've had two outgoings today. Um, first one, the only one that's actually permanent, it's a loan of an obligation to buy, is Tanganga. Mm. So, mm. bit of a weird one. Never really played much for us. Um, you know, I think we agree he wasn't at the required level, but I suppose the easier question is to just go, it's a bit of a shame it didn't work out, isn't it? Mm, mm. Well, I mean, I think one of the peaks of his career was the beginning of two seasons ago when uh, when the we Liverpool. played against City and he kicked, yeah. Yeah. he kicked Grealish off the park and uh, and he went off at the end of the game and, and the crowd was singing, uh, he's one of our own about Jaffet Tanganga. A pointed comment to Kane at the time, who was uh, not very mm. happy and playing golf with Gary Neville and talking about going to City. Mm. And um, the thing with him is that he's never got a run of games. He's had quite, he's picked up quite a few injuries in his yeah. time at Tottenham. And, mm. uh, you know, his, his debut was in at the deep end against Liverpool at home. Jose put him in, which is interesting given the narrative is that Jose never blooded the any youngsters in relation to the first team. He did well it, I, as well. Yeah. So I think with Jaffet, it's a shame because he also, he got on. So I was going to say, Jose also threw on like a 19 year old just to turn around and say, hey, look, that I gave him, or a 17 year old or whatever to say, I gave the youngest debut as well. So like, yeah. that was Jose's mentality too. It's like, see, I did like, but yeah. Like, yeah, and I think that at the end of the day, he um, look, he he's never had a run of games due to injury. Um, I think his mm. distribution is pretty poor. Um, there was a school of thought that he might th thrive under Ange in terms of the way that Ange ball is, in terms of you know tough tackling, tackling defender, not maybe uh, you know required to be that smooth in distribution. But he's not made it. There's been enough managers who've looked at him. And uh, decided not to go forward. So uh, we wish him the best of luck, and and we put him in the uh, in the central defenders hall of fame with Guy Butters, uh, Vlad Chiretches, Alton Thurwell, and Chris Perry. <laughs> oh dear! Um, At least a lot of our younger Spurs fans are learning a lot of player names that they never would have heard of, whatever days of. <laughs> I, I, actually, I'll tell you something rather embarrassing in relation to that. So last yes. time, I don't think it was last time. No, when me and my dad went to, I think it was against Morecambe. Yeah, it was. You've heard my infamous rant about a certain individual in the uh, match one that day. Um, and we don't need to hear it again. No, 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 no. This is a different story. Um, I've said my piece on that particular individual. Um, Diver. Um, everyone's favourite um, wine reviewer 
uh, brought us down to like the tunnel where the players come out. And you know, we met Lloris, yeah, yeah, had a photo of him. And then me and my dad had a photo with uh, Gary Mabbott. I didn't know who he was. And I was like, oh, I don't know, it's old guys. And he was like, oh, he's like a Spurs legend. And I was like, oh, okay. I look him up. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, he actually is. But there you go. That's, that's the youth for us. But that is the trouble with the youth today. And I don't wish to sound like some kind of Daily Mail reader, all right? But, you know, when, when I was going at your age, and it, it's, it's like Danny Branchflower turned up or something like that, or Pat Jennings, I'd know who they are. Because as, as the song goes, if you know your history. And, you know, you can't just... When, the, when you meet the legends, when Diver the Fiver brings you into the Hallows Tunnel Club, right, for a bit of lobster mornay and some champagne, you got... and. The legends are there. You've got to know. We've had legends on like Mickey Hazard on. The love is the love and the history is the history. Yeah. The club doesn't exist without that. So if well, you walk down mm. the street in, in Perth, let's say Shy, once, once the sun goes up and he's finished his Pringles, he walks down the high street <laughs> and he sees Ringo Starr or Paul McCartney. He's not going to go, oh, I wasn't around when the Beatles were around. No, he will recognise them. And James, there's something for you to reflect and ponder on. As you well, go through the weekend, I'd rec I'd recognise Robert Smith, right? So, okay. <laughs> well, there you go, there you go. If Robert what? Smith was in the Tunnel Club next to some Lobster Mornay and Diver introduced you, you'd know him. I'd so probably time to... fanboy out, but um, there you go. Love the Cure. Anyway, you, um, you don't want to know that I was dancing mm. to the Cure at one o'clock this morning, do you? And, and I... with that thought in mind, move on. I'm just gonna say, yeah. <laughs> anyway, there was a little anecdote I thought I'd bring up. Um. So another outgoing, an interesting one, breaking Daniel Levy's cardinal golden rule about Ooh. not giving players to rivals. This man, a man who I won't comment on his girlfriend, um, yeah. Sergio Rehilon, has gone on loan to Man U. Now, whereas Tanganga is a loan with an obligation to buy, I believe the fee is $8 million, Oops, book. this is just a loan with no fee from what I've read. What do we think about him going to United? And also, what happened to his Spurs career? He's going to get slaughtered against Arsenal. I can guarantee you that. Him versus Sacco is going to be a horrendous <laughs> afternoon for him. Um, I think we just... Again, I think this is a, a, a one of the list of players he's not got... Uh, you know, I think Regulon's got talent and he's <laughs> a nice guy and all this sort of lot. But I don't think he's got the right mentality. I think he's... I think Andrew's obviously taken a look at him and thought, nah, don't need him around. Um, and so we just got him off the books. But there was rumour that he was going to have a break clause or something like that in his, his loan uh, for January or something, but apparently that's not the case. He'll be there till next summer. Um, so whether United do anything with him, but I think he's I think he's going to have a very tough afternoon against Arsenal to start his time because he's going to go straight in the team. Will he go straight into team? Mm. I know Shaw's injured. Haven't they got anyone else? Not really, unless they play Dallow on, on that side and Wambasaka on the other or something, which could be the case. But, um, yeah, I'm not that bothered about it. He's barely featured for Tottenham for such a long time that, um, you know, again, it's just one of those there was potential and it never really got anywhere. Because when did he go out on loan? Was that under Mourinho or was that under Conte? I can't remember. Conte. Conte. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. killed so many of these bloody players. It's unbelievable. Well, well, we I... have we have we have had five managers in five years. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? Sorry, no, I, I'm really happy, James, that the work. The, thank you for doing the prep work in this as well. And I'm really happy that you put up a picture of Serge in his blue gloves because I always used to like watching him wear his blue gloves in August. <laughs> um, and uh, and the fact that you got there, did, it did look a bit colder in that picture. So um, I think that when Serge joined us, he was to take over. He took over from Danny Rose, who was banished to the uh, under 21s for the season. Mm. And uh, I thought his first season, uh, he was all right. He looked okay. And then when Nuno started, he looked all right under Nuno. And then once Conti came in with his wing backs who he required to bomb forward, put crosses in and get goals. Um, that proved to be a problem. And he went out on loan, whereas we kept uh, that well-known marauding right wing back Emerson Royale, which I know it's verboten to be horrible about him anymore. Um, so I think um, 
I was actually when we did a, a show at the beginning of the summer where we, you know, keep transfer loan show. Uh, the back four, the only two I actually kept was uh, Serge and uh, Romero. Everyone else, I said, get rid of them, right? And um, I thought he had a bit of a chance under Ange, but obviously that's not happened. It is a bit strange that old uh, Coy's day to Dan has decided to strengthen a rival. But, um, you know, that's that's just the way it is. Um, I think the other highlight of his career was when he broke lockdown and went round to Coco Lamella's house for Christmas Day. Mm. After and I took Jose, a photo of it and posted it. Yeah, after Jose had bought that not very nice uh, Spanish pig because he thought he'd be on his own. So Jose does have a caring <laughs> sign side, ladies and gentlemen. So that are, that is the the highlights for me of Serge Reggie on Tottenham career. Anyone else? Yeah, like no tribute. I hand it over to you. Look, I th- I think he I think he came in and looked really exciting to begin. Like you know, this fast young you know, kind of winger, you know, like, you know, wing back defender and that. And I think he came in and there was a lot of hope for him, but, you know, he got found out pretty quickly, unfortunately. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think just one of those players again, which I, again, it's hard with these players because obviously they've gone from like four different systems in four years. So I think, you know, you, like half these players might have actually done well had we had some sort of consistency with management, but unfortunately they've, you know, I thought he looked pretty, pretty okay. But again, he's been asked to play, you know, so many different roles over like the last four years going from, you know, Marino ball, even though it's similar to Conte ball, you know, to Conte or to Nuno, to Conte, Ryan Mason twice. And then, you know, like there's been like six, you know, different managers. So I think it's, it's hard to judge him based on that. I think, you know, he just see one of the game, one of those guys that just never fulfilled his potential. Like yeah. with us, I think he was quite exciting and looked quite exciting, young coming in and that. But again, just got found out too quickly when the pressure was put because you know we had to absorb so much pressure um, throughout the last few years playing under Conte and, and Mourinho. Um, I think had we had just one man, you know, had he been under Posh for four years and that, like who I don't think he would have been, you know. I don't think Danny Rose or Kyle, or Kyle Walker would have been a story, but, you know, Danny Rose would have probably looked half as good as he did if he didn't have the consistency under, you know, Pochettino. So it's kind of it's kind of hard to to judge what what actually happened, what would have been at the end of the day. Um, he obviously didn't fulfil his potential, but maybe under consistent management for three years, he might have turned out to be a pretty decent backup or pretty decent, pretty decent player for us, but... Yeah. yeah, he's unfortunately one of the one of the other ones. Who... Well, the consistent theme a lot of, through a lot of what we're talking about is that the amount of managerial and system changes over the last well since Poch left has caused chaos. Mm. It's caused chaos in the recruitment. It's caused chaos in the type of players that we have in the squad or what they're able or not able to do. And this is just the mess we've been left with. Like, I, I was sorry. Can I just comment? On Kerry thing and that no Kerry, it's it's four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning in Australia and I'm out the back of my sister's place because I'm moving into a rental that I've been looking for like five months in the rental market. So no, I haven't forgot to pay my electricity bill. Um, you know, Perth does have electricity. I know that Dave might, you know, we're a bit behind the times in Australia, but we have discovered electricity from the 1800s. Um, so do we, we we do have it here. Darwin didn't maybe have electricity for a while, but Perth is a bit more progressive. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I'm not paying my sister's electricity bill either. Um, and, yeah, I'm going to ask a lot of bloody questions. I don't watch bloody footy. It's shit. Sorry, camera. In, <laughs> I, watch in, the, I, watch the, I watch the real football. In my defence, I sit in a dark room and I have a webcam light. You can see me. It's 10 o'clock just, at night. I was just, yeah, I was just going for the James theme. I've seen a lot on the cheese room, and I was just got you know I wanted to, you know, go for that dark theme. That I, yeah, I mean, like, whereas I, costumes. whereas in Sydney, where the sun shines forever on golden streets, I bring the sun rising for every show. That's, as <laughs> yeah, per my play, sunny, yeah, yeah as you, per my sunny disp, 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 yeah, whatever you pay, you pay, disposition. You pay, you pay for that too in Sydney as well. All right, that's sun, I, I pay for the sun. Yeah, the sun's very expensive. <laughs> I mean, everything, everything's expensive in Sydney, to be honest. 
Absolutely. And apparently with the most unfriendly bunch of people in Australia, according to everyone outside of Sydney. So I'm very at home here. <laughs> oh, my ex is from Sydney. I like Sydney. They've got, oh, they go. got a place in my heart. Hmm. Ah. Anyway. <laughs> Move on. on. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I was going to make a joke and then, no. Um, so. Go on here, James. No, 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 no. I was going to say, usually uh, cities my exes are from, I usually hate that city. Anyway, um, so, you know, been a few rumours about, because apparently Tap Sober doesn't exist anymore, nope. floating around about who we're looking at as a centre-back option for cover. Mm. Um, one of the names being thrown around most heavily is Boyd Kelly. Here, seen against Ollie Skip, and that's not a flattering photo of Skip, is it? Um, it's only been on the 40-year-old face. Has Ollie been on the pingers all night long? I mean, he looks like he's come straight from Ministry of Sound, doesn't he? It's very Phil Jones-esque, that photo. Yes. Yes. I think he'd have a bigger smile on his face if he had been. Um, <laughs> but um, Yeah, he looks like he's in a bit of a K-hole there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, what do, what do we think about um, Lloyd Kelly? Because I'm going to throw an interesting statistic at you. He has only think. played 32 Premier League matches over three seasons in the Premier League. Um, right. Well, two and a bit. Um, what do we think about him? What do we know about him? Do we think he is a suitable cover option for Spurs? Uh, well, I've got to be honest. You know, I think, you know, as, as I said, when uh, when uh, Coy's day to Dan uh, put on his DJ uh, headphones and, play, and boomed out fool's gold by the Stone Roses at the end of the Brentford game, I didn't think to myself... Lloyd Kelly is the answer, all right? I didn't say to myself, let's get someone who's playing for Bournemouth and made this little appearances over the last three seasons. However, if Ange sees something in him that he thinks is worthwhile, then uh, then we should do that. But I just think that the kind of uh, naivety slash arrogance of Coy's day to Dan to think he could do a deal for him in the last couple of days of the transfer window and Bournemouth not being in a position to get in a replacement. I think Bournemouth quoted him a price too high, and that was the end of that one. And, and yeah. um, it's not happening. No, nah. so they can't get replacement, so it's dead. According exactly. to our most reliable Wikipedia source, he was in the EFL Championship team of the season 21 22, and that PFA team of the year for the championship as well. But, like, I don't know, it also means nothing as well because seeing Joe Rode on, and you know, half these players who come in have done well in the championship and just been championship. Level, unfortunately. I mean, it's the same thing with uh, who don't who's that championship player who oh, even Skip, like you know, Skip was absolute mustard for Norwich, and unfortunately, hasn't cut it for us. Like, he's been looked good at a few points in that, but unfortunately, the championship's a good barometer in a way, but it's you know, and maybe under Angel will be a bit different because obviously, we play more attacking football like they do more, you know, championship teams tend to, um, whereas we've been playing defensive you know, dross the last couple of years. But, um, yeah, I think I think it's hard because, you know, the championship should be a good barometer as to, like, how good a player is and can they perform in, in the Premier League and that. But it's shown time after time with us, unfortunately, that it hasn't been the way from, you know, from road on to, to skip being good for to Norwich and not being great for us. We haven't had great... Uh, you know, ironically, the best player we ever got we came from, you know, got, got, but ironically, the best player from the lower leagues we had in the last five years or ten years has been from League One, and that's Daly Alley. Like, mm. you know, he's coming from a League One team, so it's... It can be you done. Know, it's, it's a you've got to scout the right players for your system, and I think that's the problem. We'll, 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 we'll sign players, but nine times out of ten in the re in the recent years, they're, they're players that just Either sit on the bench or never play, and if you don't play games, you're never going to get into mm. the team and settle into the team. And that was the problem: is that it's all about consistency and learning systems, all that kind of lot. And I think that's where you know Skip did all right when he had a good run in the team, and then he had that that really weird. I can't remember what it was. It was some like weird back injury or pelvic industry in, industry or uh, injury. That yeah, he, he had a he had a groin injury for a long and time, and then had to get. An infection. Yeah, I'm I'm working rehab industry. Then nasty injuries to yeah to rehab because like the, you know that's sorry not going to detail but you know that was a that can put you out and that with it because they can last forever and that so yeah. you know and there's and so much in, yeah 
Yeah. He's never been the same since that. So, unfortunately, I think Skip's got a lot of work to do to get in the team consistently, especially when Benton Kerr comes back. Um, yeah, but going back to Lloyd Kelly, I think, again, it's it's what the point I said earlier about if he was someone that Ange generally wanted, he, and he might have generally wanted him, it's just, it, it just it's bizarre. And regardless of if you're trying to get players out, if it's someone we desperately need or Ange wants for the system, we should have gone mm. through it. So. Um, and then if we can't get rid of these players, they're just we're in the same situation regardless. Regardless of whether we sign Lloyd Kelly or not, a lot of these players are still going to be here and they're not going to get registered. So it's just like, why don't you just get the players we needed and then you've still got that... It's a weird position where we've got an overinflated squad with bugger or games where the last a couple of years that we've had too many games. Like, you know, we've had... Obviously not being in Europe and that changes it all, but, you know, like we've... Yeah, it's just kind of swung the other way in that with it. Like, we don't have enough games for these players to be able to... Yeah, we also, also, I don't know, we seem to be always in a bit of a crap position. Like, like I remember two years ago, last year, it was our homegrown was a massive issue. Uh, we seem to be in these, get us in these situations where we've got too many of one thing and not enough of the other. I mean, and, you know, as you know, Dave, we point that to the league ownership and stuff like that, like, surely for the millions that they get paid, they should be aware of this. Not like, oh, suddenly we have 33 players and crap, where did they come from? I didn't know there were 33 players at the, like, You'd think there'd be a bit more switched on, you know, even with the homegrown thing, it was like, oh crap, we don't have enough homegrown. It's like, it's a pretty basic rule as to, mm. you know, yeah, yeah. It's just, we seem to get us these, into these weird positions where it's suddenly like, oh, wait, we've got 32 players registered and, you know, we can only have 20. It's like, <laughs> where are these, you know, people who are getting paid the millions to basically turn around and go, no, really, we can only have 25, we've got 33. It's, I know that it's not easy just to cut and get rid. It's not football manager, but, Again, they're getting paid millions, and it's not exactly it's it's a, yeah. it's numbers they're dealing with. So it's just a surprise we get ourselves in these weird positions. Um, yeah, and then again, this is it's all the same. It's all the same things coming up because you know we, we've known about the issue of the overinflated squad for at least a year because we had eleven players out on loan mm. last season. Yeah, we had a whole first team out on loan, um, and you know. If, if we had the consistent management, you would probably plan to say, right, okay, over the last year, we'll get rid, we'll figure out how we're going to get rid of the players that that particular manager doesn't want because you know he doesn't want them. But because we've got rid of Conte and then we've had two different temporary managing in since then, and then you don't know who the new manager is, you're not just going to go and sell a load of assets that, that that manager might want. And we didn't know who the manager was going to be straight away anyway and then obviously I just wanted to have a look at some of these players as well which drags everything on so it's just this summer I, I've I've said for a long time this summer I felt was always going to be as soon as Conte went I've said that this summer is going to be an absolute mess because we've got well Chelsea pre Bowley like what did they have like 45 players out there like seven first team squads out on loan around we don't need to like follow what, whatever the hell they were doing they literally had like 45 players at one point, I think. Well, they've Lloyd signed 25 players all... alone. But their squad, yeah. is, their squad is massive. I don't know but what like, that before, was. Before, I don't know how they managed to get all these players out on loan, but I remember when, like, you know, Fat Frank was came back in and suddenly, you know, all these players, when they had the transfer ban, were coming from the four corners of the globe or whatever because they had, like, you know, players in the, you know, in bloody Antarctica playing. Oh, yeah, he exists. He plays for Chelsea. Like, there wasn't, I don't think, a player in the... A part of the corner of the earth, which didn't have a Chelsea player. So I don't know how they managed to, but then again, I don't know how Chelsea get away with every, anything they do, but that's another story. Like, <laughs> but yeah, but it's just weird. Like they seem to have managed to get all these players out on loan and, and that, whereas we have such difficulties shifting like two players. It's yeah, it's, um, it's a mess. I, yeah, I, it does stagger me how we can't move on some of this dead wood. You know, it does feel as if it is too cushy for them at Spurs, and if we're overvaluing them a little bit, perhaps. But um, it, it, it is a fun one for everyone. Okay, mm -hmm. just to add some joy. So this is every deadline day signing or every notable one we've done since two thousand and two. I got there so you can have a little look. Mm -hmm. Who of these? Do you mm -hmm. think was the best? And I don't even need Brennan... to do. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Let's, let's let's have a top three. 
Kevin, okay. where do you think Brennan Johnson currently ranks in levels of excitement to these? So th th this is actually announced and bought on deadline day. Yeah. yeah. Have they just ordered the top three in order? Because I, I mean, there's maybe one at the top and that with it, but I feel like the top, the, the best three are kind of grouped together. If anyone can guess who, like, are you talking about, uh, uh, Gregor Rosaic, Steve Malbron, and Pat <laughs> No, I was actually talking about Ryan Sessignon, Laurente, and, and Serge Aria, but you're close. <sighs> right, <What>? okay. <laughs> Boy, right. Shy. I'm Christ. joking, I'm joking. Ooh, I was talking about okay, Vandevar, okay. Vandevar okay, Parker, okay. Vandevar Parker and Lloris in my, I yeah. mean, the only other one that I'd probably put in there is is probably Keane, squeeze mm. Keane in there, but I think obviously Vandevar you know, was and about number one, 100%. yeah, number one. I think Hugo as well, as much as you know, as yeah. much as whatever it was, you know, not many besides De Gea, and also he had a demise at United as well. There's not many teams in the last. I mean, look at Chelsea, they bought a 75 million pound goalkeeper to realize he was pretty bad average to then buy a 50 million pound goalkeeper who's now gone to Saudi Arabia to then buy like. You know, there's not many teams who can say they had a keeper who was pretty consistent with them for, for 10, you know, eight plus years. Um, so I think I, I love Lloris genuinely. I just, it was a shame what happened to him. And, and you know, he, yeah, his architect was going downfall sometimes with his footwork. Um, but those are probably my my three. I'd have my three plus one with Keane. Mm. Yeah, no such excitement now with... Um... I think, like I said, I think what we've talked about, James uh, Johnson is a good player, mm. and if he's if he's a player that Andrew's wanted and targeted, then it's great that we've got him in. Um, mm. It's just the fact that the the underwhelming element of it isn't necessarily with him. It's the fact that we haven't probably got all the elements in that we should have got, and it's it's all of this has been impacted by a problem that we've known about for a long, long time, and we've not have the sort of creativity or the braveness to solve that problem because there were ways that we can solve it but it involves spending money that you're not going to ever see again which the club don't want to do mm -hmm. yeah i'd have to agree i mean in a vacuum he's uh an excellent signing like like i say i've watched him most for wales and i'm a little bit biased in that aspect but he is a fantastic player he's like very, very reminiscent of young Aaron Lennon in the sense that he will take mm -hmm. on a player. He's very confident, but I think he has better end product. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking from watching Aaron Lennon on YouTube, mm. but he is that kind of profile and he does have good end products. And I think it's a very high ceiling. And if Ange likes him, great. I mean, I generally, and his recruitment and talent identification is usually quite good. Mm. That's him in that department. Yeah. But as good a signing as I think he is, We've sold our greatest ever goal scorer, and we haven't bought a striker. We've mm. got a guy who's scored. But I, got, yeah, I, I'm a big believer of the players know that we've sold our greatest ever goal scorer. And no, sorry, teams know you sold our greatest ever goal scorer, and any player who's worth fifty million to any other team is going to be worth a hundred billion to Spurs because they do. You know, the, the teams will will slap. You know, so if, there could have been players who've gone in for that. You know, as much as we think we know with today's social media and. And, you know, as much as Fabrizio Romano, you know, you know, it will come out with everything. And anything. there's probably things that we don't know about where they probably inquired about someone and gone, oh, you know, he might be all right. And suddenly, you know, he, if he's a 30 million pound player, they've said to Spurs, well, he's 60 million, 60 million mm. to you. And, mm. you know, they, they know that we've got that, that 100 million pounds. And, and they also know that Levy is obviously one of the biggest pain in the ass, you know, people to deal with in terms of a transfer so they're gonna you know uh, they're gonna do everything and anything to make his life hell um because he's gonna make their life hell like they will and now they know that we've got that that and that's what they always said they know the minute Kane goes teams know that Spurs desperately need a striker that we've got that money and it's not going to be easy to you know to, to get a striker uh you know, especially with the overinflated and also with the overinflated market we, we're in as well, that whatever we can get, Saudi can give them 50 million more than two, which is it's a major problem. Like, mm. yeah, it's a huge Yeah, I mean, issue. I think, 
Yeah, I mean, the thing with Kane is what Ange came out with is that he said they, they had a chat with Kane at the start of the summer when he started and it was understood that he would not he's not signing a new deal and he's off, right? If a, if a, if um, if the suitable price came in for Levy's satisfaction, which is the game that was we played with Bayern all summer because there was no market for Kane other than Bayern yeah. and he wasn't going to sell to Man United, although he did loan Serge and his lovely blue gloves to Man United. And I think that if you're going to do that, you should have had something lined up, like we did with Bale. We did a lot of the business before Bale actually went to Real Madrid that summer, right? Yeah. So there's nothing to stop him out, there. That turned out well. It turned out very well because we <laughs> no, got... No, yeah. is it not, no, no, not Bale, was in like the players that we had lined up for, you know, the Magnificent Seven. Uh, well, some people still think that Eric Coco Lamella... Is is a great was a great player for Tottenham because uh, you know he was a shit house and he was our shit house. Whereas some <laughs> people, including myself, think he was a load of old rubbish. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, that's the thing, really. I mean, we should have, we should, you know, I'm just amazed that we haven't bought a striker. Now, I'm not saying that we go out and and, and spend fifty, sixty million smackers on a striker like we did last summer. Um, but you know, you'd have thought you'd get someone in. And 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 someone who's who's going to fight for a place straight away, and and the fact of that I've got an unpopular that, opinion. Go on, let's. I like to hear. No, no we're I, all about. No, I think opinion. I I think Dane Scarlett. I know they didn't do great the other night. I'm, maybe it's not in that. I think that we're going to push like Ange is going to get him coming through, and he's going to be the surprise package. The surprise package of this. I know it's a bit of an unpopular opinion. That maybe he's a bit young and that. You know he's been loaned out, right? Oh, all right. Well, there's my. <laughs> all right well that might shit. be the case that's that a... might be the case for next season mate but yeah he's, he's next, yeah all right yeah fuck well that's the right. problem with but, yeah it's told i told because <laughs> that happened that's happened earlier today here when you were asleep uh, <laughs> all right he's well. gone he's gone to he's gone to it switch he went to it switch he's a tractor boy now right. he's gone to it switch can we we're season. live but can we just get that you know comment out uh, there, what yeah. i'll do for you shy is i'll i'll clip that bit up and stick it on twitter just for you all I... right <laughs> jesus christ i've I mean, been banned well, enough well, living well, in darwin the last four years all right be nice i i i've probably watched more dane scarlet than most spurs fans Ironically, because last season he was on loan to my local team, who we will not mention, because I'll be attacked if I if anyone in that city knows I support Spurs. Um, he was like horrifically mismanaged by uh, John Massinio, the manager, um, and he, he's obviously talented. But yeah, and he's he needs a season where he's not going to just get substitute appearances and play in like central midfield and out wide mostly. That'd be nice, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe give him a year and we'll reevaluate. Hopefully, he gets a good season at Ipswich where he's starting and playing up front. Where um, is, is Troy Parrott? He's been lined out again as well. Has he been sold or is he? Is he's, he's gone sold? to, uh, he's, I think he's gone to a Dutch club, hasn't he? Yeah, it's, uh, oh, who was it? Not uh, Groningen or something like that. It's, yeah, someone in the Dutch top. Yeah, division. Google search. He's playing. He's not a. He's uh, not a no, Excel, Excel saw. Excelsior. Excelsior. Right, Excelsior. so he's yeah. Troy Parra. How old is he now? 28 or something? No. Uh, 2002. He's still a baby. Um, he, he's missed out there because he could have gone to the Dutch club of the best name ever, Go Go Eagles. That's he's 21. <laughs> he's 21. Yeah, he's how, many, how many loans is this now? Three? He was at Millwall. Wasn't yeah. he at Ipswich? I mean, you can't really talk about how many lines it is because well, Harry Kane had like seven before he became our greatest. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Like, probably, again, man of, I know it's one in one in a million, but you know, matter- we're, we're talking about the same thing again, though, isn't it? If every time he goes out on loan, by the time he comes back, he's got a new manager. It's just like, <laughs> how are these guys ever meant to progress? Because there's no stability, there's no consistency in the running of the club at all. Yeah, but so, this is a new start, though. Don't forget. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this yeah. Is a, this think... is this is the new new era since the last new era, and that's look, important. We know that these guys aren't going to get games. They're not at the moment. No, I mean, look, he's gone out on loan, and Parrot's gone out on loan. Scarlett's mm-hmm. gone out on loan. Mm-hmm. If we had and... Europe, I think they would have maybe stayed. One or two of them might have stayed, but yes. we've got so few games. They're just never going to play, are they? Nope. Mm. Especially now, we've only got the FA Cup left. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
what's Valise going to develop? Do you know what I mean? It, it, surely well, it's going to be beneficial for him to go out on a loan, you would have thought. Is, he can't well, even that, get a work permit, can he, at the moment? Who? Oh, right. Valise. Really? Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, no, we, that's why he hasn't been in the squad for us. He can't get a work why permit. Why does his which... and bloody work permits? Wasn't there another player a few years ago who couldn't? I mean, I know, like, Dybala was the image right thing, but wasn't there another player who couldn't get a work permit as well for us and had that issue? We always seem to have these, like, I know work was more common, but these, like, random things where, like, they just can't. <laughs> they haven't sorted out, you know, the basic things around getting the player oh, actually be able to, you know. Legally allowed in the country. He was never going to come in and start anyway. He's a, he's a he was a youth signing, wasn't he? Mm. Believe so. From I mean, yeah, we've given Hugo permission to speak to Nice, so I think he will go. And the Ga- the Gallagher deal is completely off. Connor Gallagher is very much staying at Chelsea. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, have we uh, have we got any other hot updates? Because uh, um, yeah. Johnson signed. Johnson's confirmed. They just haven't officially. Announced it from the club, but he's that's done deal. What What do you think we're going to do? Is the welcome kind of video clip on? Is he uh, going to Is he going to be uh, welcomed by Ben Davies? You know, yeah. we don't do anything that excited anymore. anymore. We do a very sort of generic, boring, yeah, just like their statistics there. or whatever, isn't it? They say a little bit, and then that's it. It's very standardised across every single sign, and we don't do anything unique. Because we're not that excited. I still think Doherty, I still think Doherty is one of the, one of the best ones with deleting the Arsenal tweet. Like as much oh, yeah, as, yeah. as much as he turned out crap and that with it, it was the old you know go on and like you know I hate Spurs or whatever and just like get rid of that. Okay. And, I mean, I mean, yeah. Madison dressed like a lovely khaki outfit that it looked like it was from it ain't our hot mum from the nineteen seventies, which I know for Shy yeah. and James would be what on earth he's talking about, but you know he looked nice there. And you know, he, you know that picture of him and his son buying some uh, clobber yeah. in the Spurs shot, which no doubt Levy's deducted or added onto his first salary. Yeah. Uh, I think the <laughs> irony of I think the irony of the San, if anyone saw the Alexis, Alexis Sanchez one for United, where he turned out to be the worst bloody signing for him, and he did the whole playing piano, and I don't know it was quite a, it was like this really like you know monumental intro video for Sanchez to turn out to be an absolute. Bomb of a signing for United after leaving Arsenal was um, quite quite ironic because they did this huge intro video for him. Probably spent more on the video than they did on the amount of goals he scored, and just turned out to be crap for United. It was yeah. Good. Do you think they'll do like a pun on like he's Magic Johnson, something like that? You know, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm I'm trying my best for the Spurs thing. aren't Spurs haven't been like that. Obviously, smart, Dave. I think it's going to be a very boring intro video. That's what I think. Our marketing team do these days, which is very yeah. dumb. Yeah, they're much um, better at, at saying send you an email about the Beyonce concert or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, or yeah. increase ticket prices. Um, <laughs> yes. The interesting thing I wanted to try and look at was um, while we're waiting for the deadline day to slam shut, was um, obviously there's free agents around who can move post post the window shutting, and I've just been looking on. Uh, transfer marks um, just to see who's free agents at the moment and because we were talking about strikers and the lack of an out-and-out striker that we feel that we we do need um, just seeing who was on there and one of the top ones is Alfredo Morelos who was striker at Rangers for a few years and scored a hat full of goals and he's currently a free agent so that'd be an interesting one surely he's only 27 do you reckon we're going for Leandro Damio again? He's still playing, isn't he? <laughs> I, think I, th- he is. I think that would be. I think it'd be wheel him in on the wheelchair and get him in. We should. Brown's on a free. And also Rivaldo, who 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 yeah. wrote a lovely letter saying thank you very much for being interested in me, but I'm going somewhere. Or we else. should just try and try and bring him a router so he actually goes for a record number of clubs that he's that he's played for, and you know, like what does he play for? Like 17 clubs and. Like mm. somehow still get sold for like 50, 60 million. I know there was a bit of a rumor as to is he just a you know is he is he just a bit of a sports wash for like you know some sort of other deals that's going on because somehow Morata scores three goals a season and still gets sold for sixty million. Yeah. Every, other, every other club that he goes for, so it's a little bit like mm. so uh, you know maybe we'll get some players out there though that are free agents. So you never know mm. something might occur if we can't get anything in before. 
11, which is going to be very unlikely. I can't imagine anything big happening. So, so when was the last time we actually bought a free agent after transfer deadline? I, I know it's, it's part of the, the ritual and tradition yeah. on a transfer deadline show to talk about free agents and the possibilities there. But when was the last one we actually bought one? Do you know the answer, Dave? Just say, no, you know I've got, I ain't got Scooby. No. I can't no. remember. No. I don't we, we don't, I'm, we looking, don't I'm looking at all yeah, our previous which transfers. I'm really surprised about. We, we don't seem to be clever in that. Area. Maybe what we'll end up doing is cancelling end on Bello's contract, pay him out, and then get him in on as a free agent. <laughs> Wasn't it Joe with, Joe? with Joe Hart, was he brought in after? Because he was uh, Joe, Yeah, that's a good shout. I think, it, I think Joe, but I think Joe Hart. He is, I was just looking was, on our list of transfers and that, and I think Joe Hart, very good cricketer, very good cricketer, Joe Hart. <laughs> Who can forget? And even going back, the old Serge, he, he took part in the old cricket in the gym. God bless him. Yeah. So, so that's another highlight of Serge's career. We're on to three now. His gloves, a pig, and cricket. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't, you know, there's probably got to be people around that, that there might have been available, but we probably won't do anything like that. I'd be surprised if we did. Or maybe uh, maybe Lewis Saha. I mean, that was years back. But... Oh, so a very good point that's just been raised. <laughs> very good point, Kerry. We were just checking that you were on top of things, okay? And, of course, Adama Traore went to Fulham this summer, which who Kerry yeah, was That lobbying. was a very funny did someone see their announcement video where like they announced that they had baby oil behind him? That's a very <laughs> funny announcement. They think they, they put him in front of like a bunch of baby oil. Also, it's a very funny announcement by Fulham, actually. Or they think they just put a bottle of baby oil as their like and like announcement incoming or something, and everyone knew who it was. Mm. Yeah. So I think maybe should we go on and talk about the Burnley game? <laughs> yeah, let's, 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 comment let's, move Kerry, Kerry let's King. Move Sorry, can I jump in? The Manor Solomon though, like genuinely, because Kerry King mentioned and and he looked really good in preseason. I mean, look, I'm biased. I'm Israel. I'm Israeli, so I actually, you know, I've got you know, I always want like them to do well in that. But Manor Solomon did, you know, look pretty good um, in preseason. What are your thought? What are you guys thoughts? On him, do you think he'll come good? Do you think he'll actually get some decent game time? Um, or, yeah. Well, I thought, I, I uh, of course, the previous Israeli who played for Tottenham, Ronnie Rose, until I was present for his greatest moment in the Spurs shirt when he scored a hat trick, Southampton away. Oh, I remember that game. In, in, the, in the FA Cup in 95. Yeah. So, hmm. Uh, I mean, I've got to be honest. I do think it was a, a, a that, that that one's another opportunistic uh, Coy's day to Dan deal in relation to the fact that he was free and therefore mm. he, were, he 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 moved in. So we'll see, really, because mm. effectively, who's he replaced in the squad? He's replaced Lucas Mora. So yeah. if he's any worse than Lucas Mora, then that's not much of a benchmark either way. So let's see if he improves on Mora and. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and he looked good in preseason. He looked good at the West Ham. You know, he lost him. He looked good. He looked good at the West Ham game. Like I think the um, Fulham that, game. But... Was, yeah. Well, Kevin's just said it there about Fulham. I think the, yeah. problem Fulham, the Fulham game was the problem because I watched that. The problem was that because Everyone of how bad our midfield was, the transition mm. to the attacking line was almost non-existent. So people like Solomon were just totally isolated. They weren't getting anywhere. weren't getting the ball because our midfield was that bad at actually getting it to them. So I think if we'd had a Basuma or a Madison on the pitch from the start, I think Solomon would probably have played a hell of a lot more of a role in that game. And um, unfortunately, mm. again, barring injury, he ain't going to get much game time. because We saw last year how bad a midfield can make a front attacking play. Besides Kane, can make an attacking look, you know, like having a poor midfield or having midfield mismanaged, like Basuma looked a complete shadow of his form himself, like, you know, and now he looks like one of the best signings for 25 million, you know, the last few years kind of thing. So as you said, like a poor midfield and Bill being mismanaged in midfield can make all the difference. Yeah. I don't think... Sorry, I just want to comment, yeah. I think um, in terms of Burnley, I think... um, I'm hoping that we're going to have the, the start in eleven that you know we use where we we beat Bournemouth and just try and 
which was the same start eleven that we had against Man United. So I think I can't imagine um, Ch- I'm going. Oh, I'm going to tweak it now because he's, and especially if he is going to tweak it, it won't be a lot because um, he, he doesn't need to. I mean, he rested pretty much everyone in the Fulham game, so everyone's rarely. To play. I just hope we could go out and get a good result because I think the, the risk is is that we can go into the international break on a really negative note if we don't get a good result and then it's a lacklustre transfer window, we're out of the cup, instead of it being quite good positive momentum that we could have gone into the window in. So mm. let's see. It's not going to be an easy game because Burnley, I've watched a few Burnley games last season and they are um, a much different outfit of the company. They're much more... Um, tactically astute instead of just sitting back and then lumping it back up like Dyche had them playing for so many years. Mm. So, what, what do we do? We have any lineup predictions? Uh, all that. Um, oh, he's having crisps or something. Flying <laughs> oh, sorry, that my, sorry, I didn't realize my headphones. Clear. Yeah, sorry, that was my bad. <laughs> okay, you are forgiven. Um, Man, but it's, I think he's the, the lineup predictions. I think he's going to put the team. I mean, because he, he's, team, as I said, yeah. he's put he's put himself under a lot of pressure. Because if we don't get a result, you know, it's not a good week, right? So he's put himself under a lot of pressure. I think, and yeah. that's going into international week, which then starts to build a narrative, and we know about them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think that he will pick the team that he is uh, he's done in the second and third league games of the season which has been the same so I, I would expect to see that lineup restored um and then um and see how he go oh, yeah i can't see us like it, the other night showed that he can't that he don't can't rely on those you know unfortunately other players mm. um and that so yeah exactly you know that team looked quality against you know you know you know and i know they were an average you know played pretty average on the night but i mean yeah, I don't see any real changes coming from the the team, you know, um, that we play in the in the first, you know, opening games and that. And um, yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on Vicario so far? Like the new goalkeeper, you? I mean, he looks pretty reasonably reasonably I decent. Think been, um, I think he's been getting better and better in each game. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I thought the yeah. Go on, James. You, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think um, he looked a bit nervy in the first game, but since then he's just grown and grown. Um, I, I, I was just going to bring up, um, so we have to send for Carrier. You're going to bring up some Vicario stats, were you? No, no, no. I was going to just uh, bring something else up. But go ahead. Uh, look, I, um, look, the thing about Vicario is this. I felt at the time we should have just paid Brentford the money and bought in Raya because at the time you know that Raya has been an established Premier League keeper for a couple of years. He counts as homegrown. Um, and, you know, as, as if we are, you know, as we're in the top 10 most richest clubs in the world to put the money, you know, they wanted 40 million one year left. And in the what was the deal that they did in the end? I think they're doing some kind of loan. Obligation to pay. Though. Yeah. Well, so I, I was in like Avocara. Yeah. So. Yeah. So with Raya, I would have got in Raya, and they got in Vicario. I thought uh, the West Ham friend there thought he looked a bit shaky. Uh, I yeah. thought that the first game of the season he looked a bit shaky, and that YouTube clip that they show the triple save all the time is that the first save he just parried it straight back into the danger area, and I thought you know that's not so good. But I have to say, um, against United um, and against Bournemouth, I thought he was solid. Uh, he is obviously better with the ball at his feet than Lloris, but that's not hard. Mm. So, so far, I would say, uh, yeah, he's looking all right. Yep. I think he's also helped by having a decent, you know, as I said, after, you know, our back three have been, you know, our defence has been decent as mm. well. Like, he hasn't been exposed to to too much you know which which is good and you know i think again so, you know i think you know, he, the games you will be tested the games that you know we have high pressing teams play up you know not playing to our hands and that. i think that's when he really will be tested to see how good he is with you know with a lot of his shot stopping and you know distribution and stuff like that but like, at the end of the day you know with a goalkeeper the less you see the better it's kind of like you know no news is good news with a goalkeeper because it means the defense is doing their job 
it means that, you know, and if they do have to make a good save here and there, then, then great. But yeah, I think it's kind of will be tested. You know, it'll be interesting to see how he would have done under the under Conte last year and that when the pressure was huge on the defence and and that all you know, that would have really shown, you know, how he is. But for as long as our defence is doing well and we're not leaking goals and that, then you know, great. Right. Yeah. Um so just to go on to the Burnley game a little bit, here was I haven't cropped this very well in fairness. Um, but here was their lineup in their last Premier League game, which is a three-one mm-hmm. loss to Aston Villa. Right. So much for the um, possession-based uh, football they supposedly play. It's four-four-two. Sean Bice mm-hmm. still be there. Um, <laughs> are there any names there that anyone really recognises and jumps out to them? Because I'm going to be honest, I oh, I look look at this and I think, Pliny O'Shea. He he must be in his mid forties by now. Yeah, it's not it's not about O'Shea. <laughs> and um, presumably that's not Donna Cullen patrolling the middle of Burnley's midfield I, no, I would assume no, and no. Uh, you know I think uh, I think what, what we're going to do now is wow the cheeseheads watching at home or on the repeat of our knowledge of Burnley so, I uh, recognise one player actually mm. Connor Roberts yeah, yeah he's well, good yeah, is he, um, he's not Welsh by any chance, is he, James? Yeah, that's why I know him. Um, no, that's what I was going to say. So uh... <laughs> he's Gareth Bale in a nutshell, to be fair. But um, you know, you look at this sort of lineup. You know, they're going to try and keep control of the ball. They haven't had a great start to the season. You know, they got battered by Villa at home. Um, he looked good as well, to be fair. But four four two, Ange ball steamrolls this. I think. In all honesty, what do you guys think? I think, um, yeah, we, on paper we should be we should be getting a win, but we've said that <laughs> so many times against some of these teams and come unstuck. Um, I, I am more confident about these sort of games um, on the range, um, just because of how we play and stuff like that. But um, like I say, I think because of the way company plays, and Andrew's talking about it in his press conference that they're gonna very likely press quite intensely. So we've just got to make sure that we can um, be good enough on the ball to break the press. And I think if we can consistently do that, we we should get a result. So, yeah. I just want us to go into the break on a positive note, really. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, Dave? So based of our collective knowledge of the Burnley team, which we covered off quite ma- magnificently five minutes ago, we've now leapt into the well, they're newly promoted. We're Tottenham. We're and we're going to win. Is the basic is the basic conclusion that we will make. Um, I think that uh, you would like to hope that we are going to very much uh, win this, and when uh, and then we go into the international break, and all memories of Fulham away are, uh, in a cup are banished. So. Uh, Let's hope we do that. I, I, obviously, Johnson won't be available on time to play. Um, no, it's fine too late. Are Wales, who are Wales playing in the international break? Uh, Latvia and Korea. You know what's going to happen, don't you? Sonny and Johnson go in for a 50-50. <laughs> I, I have a small bone to pick with Rob Page over his squad selection, but I won't go into that. Um, well, well, I... well, who, well, who's been left out? They can't. Surely, there's not too many Welsh well, players that no, are. He's, he's, who's he not? Who? What controversy is happening in the valleys? Well, he hasn't he's picked? he's taking uh, Joe Morrell and Kiefer Moore, and I, mm. I like both good players. I mm. see Joe Morrell every week, but they're both suspended. So we have one competitive fixture and a friendly. He's taking them both for a friendly, as mm. opposed to taking any of the young youngsters, which is just. So Rob Page, Rob Page is uh, he's the worst manager I've ever seen. I'd do a better job than him. So are you saying that you now want Ryan Giggs back now that he is an no. innocent man? No, I don't think oh, I'm not going near that. But um, no, I don't want him anywhere near it. Um, I'd rather have Jim from the local pub in charge. But there you go. Is Jim um, from the local pub Welsh? Well, yeah, if he's in Cardiff, presumably. Well, I don't know. You've got it was a. a- Who's England playing in the international break? Uh, Ukraine and... Uh, oh, God, I can't remember the other one. 
Just is it just up. is it just friendlies or is it another? Is it a like? No, it's Euro like, qualifiers. Nations. It's, the, uh, yeah, it's, the Euro, okay. it's a Euro League of Nations, a tournament. I'm hugely passionate about. I'll be getting the St George's flag out and the bunting as I watch it at three o'clock in the morning. Let what are you guys' thoughts of uh, Calvin Phillips and Maguire not having to play a minute of league football and then still getting getting included in a uh, in the Calvin squad? Get called up as well. Not Calvin Lewin, sorry, Calvin Phillips, sorry, Calvin Phillips and. Um, oh, it's insane. Like, and no, no, have a look. And Kevin Phillips. No, it's, and... he, he, it's a joke that it's, it, you know. It, it's a bit of a shame one Spurs player in the whole thing. I mean, it's it's kind of shows not how far we've fallen in a way, but like, you know, the fact that James Madison is the only is the only Spurs player, I'm pretty sure, in the well, whole thing. four or five in the team. So it, he's, yeah, saying the the time, he's saying that, he's saying that Eric Dyer has not been selected for the England squad. I'm, so, I'm amazed. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. The last, the last time he was, his form was half decent and then he got selected and everything went downhill again. But but he did score the first penalty kick that uh, we won in the, English, in the World Cup. So he does go down in history against Colombia. So, you know. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And then he obviously went to miss one in the semi-final against Chelsea in the League Cup for us. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Um, so... I'm going to just ask you all for a score prediction against Burnley. Yeah. Go you first, Dave. Uh, I I reckon I'm going to I'm going to I'm following with uh, I'm going to follow good old Jimbo O'Brien here. I'm going to go three one to the Spurs. Mm-hmm. Okay, Stuart. I'm going to go two nil. Keep Ooh. the two nils going in the Hustle league. them. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, they both start oh. exactly. I was going to say say three one and then two nil as well. I'll, I think I think we'll keep a clean clean sheet again. I think I'll go yeah two 0 as well. All right, I think I I think I'd go with two 0 as well. Um, last, you know, one of the last questions I'd like to ask is uh, again we'll go around the table. Rate this transfer window out of ten. Oh, I do like oh I like this question yeah. a lot. I really do because last year with the Perisic and Basuma and Charleston, I gave it a six out of 10 and people were annoyed at me for being negative. And the summer before that, when we got in Hill and Lamella went and Romero and Emerson, we paid 25 million smackers for Emerson Royale. I gave it a three out of 10. So logically by mathematical intervals, I should give this a nine out of 10 or do I bring it back down to a three out of 10? And I would say the fact that we haven't got a centre half and two centre halves, and the fact that we really haven't got a central striker, I'm going to give it a four and a half out of ten for this window. Okay, classically optimistic of you, Dave. Um, Stuart, what's your rating? <laughs> um, so I've just read that Larice has uh, said no to Nice. Um, and what? Yes, yeah, and apparently, really? um, and has already told him he's not going to get registered, and Larice is okay with that. It tells you everything about where we're at with some of these players now, they're just sitting on their contracts. Um, mm. I think going through the list of the incomings Vicario, Madison, Van der Ven, Solomon, Valise, Phillips, and now Johnson, I, I'm ignoring Kuliseski and Poro because they've, they've obviously already. Played, it's just making them permanent. Mm. Uh, if you chucked in a gift or ban and a sent another centre back in there, like another senior centre back, mm. I probably because we've lost Kane, I probably would have lost put that down at a seven or something. But without mm. those two there, I'm probably going to have to go with a five at the moment. So you're just a point five ahead of me, and I'm yeah. the one tarnished with the brush of negativity and grumpiness. Yeah. Come you're, on. You're, you're, you're infecting me with your negativity. Hey, it's, it's your legacy. Just live up to it. Just live <laughs> up to it. Shai, what's, what's, what's your rating of the window? Um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one because I think, I know you can't, you know, you kind of go with or without, with or without the Kane transfer and that, but, you know, if you were, I think had we not lost lost Kane, this, this transfer window, you know, obviously we have, like, I think, you know, you'd be looking at probably, yeah, a seven out of a ten, and that probably we we have strengthened in the areas we need to. We finally got that central midfielder, attacking midfielder who we've needed since Ericsson 
mm-hmm. left in that. But I think given the fact that we've lost Kane, not not replaced it, and not got in another another centre half, you know, in one more central defender will probably make all the the difference. The fact that you keep going back to the fact that you know Sanchez is our next backup, which is it's just you know one injury and it throws our whole kind of squad into a bit of a, a shit yeah. place. I think. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to give it as well a, a 5 out of 10, but it's just amazing how one one signing, you know, one signing more, one signing less can take that from like 5 to a 7 or 8 because, yeah, with not of selling Kane, having not sold Kane and we've got Madison in, you know, Kane would get like 40 goals this season, you know, with, with that. And that makes all all the difference. And then getting one central defender... Have we mm. had an injury? Sanchez is well out of the picture. Um, mm. Yeah, just one signing just changes everything. Everything, which is which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. So um, James, James, we've got we've had two fives and one four point five. Where are you going? Okay, what's, I think what's your mark? If you if you look at the incomings in a vacuum, I think they're all good signings. But and this is a but bigger than Hoover Dam. Um, you can't sell your greatest ever goal scorer and not sign a striker to replace him when mm-hmm. our only attacking options are Son, who I still think is brilliant, but isn't mm-hmm. at it. Brennan Johnson, who's coming in, he's going to be good. Mm-hmm. I think he's a good mm-hmm. signing, but not there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to agree with you, Dave, like 4.5. <laughs> well, there we go. There we go. No, no. There we go. If we, I, I'm no mathematician. If we've got two 4.5s and a five, what is our average? What does that mean? Do we well, know? Is it 4.75? 4. 4. There we go. Mm. It's the 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 tra- transfer deadline show as it moves towards the end. We have collectively given it a 4.75. Okay, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask something as well. Let's say we do make it and it's just a throw, we've still got technical time with it. We make a lot in a, a last minute deadline, you know, transfer of a central defender. What mm. would everyone's rating like? Right, you know, we've announced Tap Sober is Kerry King. Well, you know, so maybe just been kidnapped and, you know, we're waiting for that announcement. Mm-hmm. Um, if we do get a central defender, and what would everyone's rating go up to out of out of 10 from what it is now? Good like one central defender. Dave? Uh, what, what am I at? 4.5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, look. It's, <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not going to happen. But if it was like come on, long lay on loan, I'd go four point five to three. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I if we got Harry Maguire on loan, I'd go four point five to four point two five. <laughs> so let's say it is taps over. We get him in. I, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to go four point five. To five point two five. So there uh, you go, Stuart. Um, I'm going to go a little bit more in the realms of reality in terms of we get some free agent centre back who's available that's semi decent as a backup. Um, I'd go. Who for... is this mythical character? <laughs> no idea. No idea. Um, I'd go from probably a five to a six. Because ultimately, we've not got another really solid centre back in. So you're t- you're t- so just to be clear, you're saying to me, if we get a free agent centre back with, who clearly no one wants, you're going to go up from five to six. That's interesting. Yeah, because we've got the we've got the body in the door. It can't we've be got, but that's the problem. Snatches, we've got a lot. We've got a lot of bodies. We've got more bodies than a serious. That's the problem. We've got problem. more bodies. We're not going to yeah, sign we'll... anyone. Well, because we couldn't get yeah. them out. All right. Well, mm. so there we go. Right, Shy. What's your conclusion? Yeah, I think I'd be the same as well. I'd probably go up to you know. Like, I, again, I don't want to knock bash on Sanchez door and that with it because it's just a sh- you know it's a shame with it. But I think at the end of the day, if we did you know, hopefully we couldn't get someone who you know put in a much worse performance. Unfortunately, that he, that he has. So I think that we'd. I probably got up to a to a six. I think obviously it was someone half decent and we made some sort of, you know, tap sober announcement or, or you know, someone half probably got up to a seven because I think it really does shift that, you know, that that one injury making the difference. But yeah, so six if it's someone like a free agent, seven if it's someone who's a, a bit more half, you know, that, that's a bit more known and, and half decent. Yeah, I for me the biggest issue is not 
bringing a striker. I mean, if you, if we turn around and got Mick Auburn, Auburn, then I go up, right? I go up to maybe a 6.5, nearly a 7, because that's exciting. That excites me. That's a striker. He scores loads of goals. Um, that's the issue for me. Okay, cool. We get another centre back in. Even if it taps over, I go up a bit, maybe two or five, because that's positive. But the issue is, we still haven't replaced or attempted to replace our greatest ever goal scorer. You can't mm. replace Harry. You know, you, what's the point of adding some sparkles to the bonnet of your car if you've taken the engine out? Um, yeah. Right. And that, that's that's my takeaway from this. But. Um, you know, we've been going for an hour and 45. Um, thank you, Dave, for coming on, despite it being very early. I'd, I, it's not as early as in Perth, but I'd like to... Uh, so this has been my third transfer window show, and maybe there's a leak between us never doing anything exciting on transfer day when I'm on. So maybe the next one I'm not on, and when we sign Tony. <laughs> yeah, How about that? Definitely. But it's been a pleasure to come on. How much and, would you uh, bet on us signing Tony? Sorry, I had to. We we got no chance of signing Tony. No, it's gambling issue. Oh, oh, oh very, very good. <laughs> oh, right see? over it. There we yeah, go. There yeah. we go. It's, it's two hours. It's, <laughs> you're you're two hours behind me, but really you're two hours ahead of me mentally. I hey. like it. Nice work. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well done. Yeah, we ain't got. Uh, anyway, it's been lovely to be on. Thank you very much, and. Uh, I'll see you January the 31st. <laughs> um, thank you, Stuart, for coming on as ever. Yeah, no worries. I was hoping that, you know, we might have had a nice little surprise signing come in, but we can't even flog Larice to his childhood club. That shows how bad things have got on a free. He doesn't want to leave because he just wants to sit on his contract for another 12 months. Ugh. Painful. Um, Painful. Thank you, Shy, for coming on. Been good having no, you. Thanks, thank, no, thanks, boys, for having me. As I said, I yeah, it's been a been a pleasure being on. I've been listening to the cheese during the last last couple of years, and obviously the fact that it was started by our you know local Australian, you know Jolly from uh, from Sydney. It's a you know it's it's a really great great show, great podcast, and you know there's always always good people on. So thanks for having me. As I said, I kind I'm happy more than a regular guest of the transfer deadline special, even if it is four o'clock in the morning. It's a uh, it's a Saturday and I'm a bit insane. I'm going to go for a park run at eight o'clock because, you know, I'm just nuts. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a pleasure. And hopefully, you know, in about two hours' time, we'll be messaging and going, you know, signing some sort of freak striker and and defender and we'll go up to a nine out of ten for our ratings. But wishful wish, wishful thinking. Definitely. Um, optimism <laughs> is what yeah. kills you. Um, Mate, I've lived in Darwin the last five years. So I've got to be optimistic because, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's what gets you through. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish by quoting the legendary Roman statesman Cicero. Uh, and this is my response to the, uh, our transfer window. Goodbye. I'm going to go and make myself stupid with wine. The only thing I have left to say is come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.